Hey everybody, a few weeks ago I did a session on texture blending art and I was showcasing some of the images that look like this that you see here on the screen and I got some comments that came back in emails asking me where did I get my textures? And I had mentioned that I make a lot of my own but you can buy some out there uh, and try to find some free ones but uh, I was requested how do you create your own textures? So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Are we ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to photography and as a photo artist pushing ourselves out of the box creatively. All right, now this session, I was requested to um, actually show you how I create my own uh, texture overlays to use in, uh, in my artwork. And again, you can go out and buy your own if you want, but again, you're spending money. You could spend some time to go find some free ones. The problem with free ones a lot of times is that they're low res, but you, know, you could sample them up. But I think there's a lot more self-satisfaction in knowing that you created your own uh, textures that you're using in your project. So I'm going to share some options and ideas for you on how to do that. So let's get started. Okay, so here in Photoshop, we have to start with a new project, so a new document we need to have. A couple different ways of doing that. You can do a shortcut keystroke. And then on, if you're on a PC, it's Control N, like in Nancy, Command N on a Mac, or just go to the File drop down menu right here and select New. And then I'm going to make a suggestion for you because most of the time it hits like your default Photoshop size. Let's make this 12 inches wide as a width and eight inches as a height and let's make sure our resolution is set at 300. The reason I suggest that is I have purchased things in the past and that they tend to be that size. You want good quality uh, as a starting point for your overlays and textures. So I'm just going to choose create and this is going to be our starting point. So let me move this up here. Now I want to fill this in with a base color. And so what I want to do is, again, it's up to your imagination. What colors do I want to use? And again, all this stuff is guidelines. So over here on our swatches, your default is always black and white. I'm going to click on the black. That opens up the color picker. And I'm going to choose a base color that's in the green area, something that's sort of a muted green. Push that down, something like that. And again, you might do blue or whatever color you want. But again, just for demos, I'm going to choose that. Click on OK. And then to fill that in, a couple of different ways of doing it. Uh, the longer way is to go to Edit drop-down menu and choose Fill. And then just make sure it's set to foreground color because yours might be set to something different. So foreground color, which is the green I selected, you click on OK and it fills that in. I'm going to undo that with um, Control-Z or Command Z on a Mac. And you know me if you've been following me for a while that uh, I like to use shortcut keystrokes. So I'm just going to do Alt Delete on my keyboard. That would be Option Delete on a Mac. And that pushes in that uh, foreground color for me really fast and easy without going to a drop down menu. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add a new layer or two. So down here where it says to create a new layer, there's a little plus there. I'm going to do that a couple times. Eh, let's do three times. Now, you're not limited to three. I just want to show you the logic behind this, and it's up to you to mix and match all the different things that I'm going to share with you. So I'm going to start out on the very first layer right there, and I'm going to pick a brush. Now, when I go to my brush feature right here on the toolbar, so make sure your brush is selected, and um, usually by default, unless you've used the brush feature to pick a different brush, it would be a different one, but um, you could go out and find brushes on the internet. You could buy them. But hey, let's not spend any time doing that and let's not spend any money. Let's do this ourselves. So let's use our legacy brushes, which is our default ones here. There's a soft brush there, but I'm not going to use that because it's not very creative. Uh, I'm going to scroll down here and I want to try something uh, as a brush I've never used before. So let's move down here and... I'm going to choose, yeah, let's keep scrolling, Steve. I'm going to try this, a square pastel. And I need to, once I select that, so let's close out of that, I need to select a color because I want to paint 
on this layer, layer one. And obviously, if I'm painting with the same color, we, you know, we don't see anything. So I'm going to click on that and choose a different color. And I'm going to choose something like, uh, let's go with this color. So it's a little bit lighter green. Click on OK. And here's what's going to happen. If I click and drag with this brush, this is what I get. And it's not very creative. I want to do something different. So I'm going to do Control Z or Command Z to undo that. And what I'm going to share with you is go to this icon right here. It looks like a little folder. And when you click on this, this opens up the brush settings. And this is the default setting right here. And you got a little preview window down here. I'm going to go to Shape Dynamics and activate that. And I'm going to push the angle jitter. Now, when I slide this to the right, watch what happens down here. So I click and drag that, see what happens. So I get something totally different. And you can go as far as you want or, you know, again, this is something you play with. Then I'm going to go over here to scattering. And let's choose a scatter and see what it does there. And the count, see if that does anything. Yep, oh, way too far. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to just leave that alone to one right there. So let's say that's what I want. And then I'm going to close out of that. So now watch what happens when I click and drag with this. See what happens? It's a little bit more creative. Uh, it's sort of scattering all over the place. And then it's just up to you. I'm not going to paint the whole area. It's just I'm sort of like just dropping in certain sections. Just like that. And then when I'm done with this, again, these are things to consider. And that is I'm on this layer again. We can go over here to blending modes and play with blending modes to see what we get. So as I scroll through here, I might like a linear light, let's say. And then again, you could pull the opacity down by clicking and dragging to left or right. I'm going to leave that at 100% for right now. And then again, these are options. I'm going to go to filter drop down menu and I'm going to choose blur as a category and I'm going to choose a motion blur. And then I'm going to play with my distance. And I'm going to play with the angle. Let me change my angle. And again, I'm just playing with this. If I go too far, um, yeah, maybe about right there. And again, this is your judgment call. And select OK. Now I go to another layer. And I repeat the process. But I want to choose different things. You could change brushes, but to save time, I'm going to keep using the same brush. But I want to change the color, obviously. So I'm going to click on the color picker again down here. So I click on that. And I'm going to choose something more in the yellow area. Something about maybe like right there. And then click on OK. And then again, I'm just going to go in different spots here. They drop in the colors. I don't have to fill in the whole thing. But again, just something a little bit different. And then again, I'll go to blending modes and play with that. Maybe multiply, let's see, lighten, screen, dodge. Um, I might go to, eh, let's go with vivid light again there. And I'm just going to maybe pull that opacity down a bit. And then again, I might go to the filter drop down menu. Let's choose a blur again. Let's just do a I don't know, Gaussian blur. Let's blur that out. So there's a preview before, after, before, after on that. And I just keep building on this. I'll go over here again on this layer. And let's get the color picker again. Let's pick a different color. Um, I might do a blue here. Let's pull down that blue about, and let's go about right there. And again, I'm using the same brush, but you could change brushes, change the setting into brushes, but again, to save time. And I'm just going to go across the top here. And again, just to work that out. And then again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the blending modes. And let's see what I can get here. You know, I might go with screen on this one. And then again, I'm going to go to filter. And I'm going to choose blur category again. And let's do the um, motion blur. And I'm going to change the direction of that to go a different direction like this. So there's a before and after. Uh, maybe I tone that down a bit. Yeah, about. You know, I'm going to do that right there. So again, you're sort of experimenting with this. Now consider doing this. You could build on this again. Just keep repeating what I'm doing here. 
but also consider at some point do a visible stamp layer. So that is Shift Control Alt E. That would be Shift Command Option E on a Mac. And what it's doing is consolidating all the visible layers below it and creating a brand new layer. Now, again, it's set to normal. Um, you could build on this again or maybe do a blending mode here. So maybe um, let's see what I get with overlay, soft, hard, I'm just sort of scrolling through this stuff. You know, I'm going to go with multiply and I'll pull that down a bit, the opacity. So you can see there's a before, after, before, after. And again, I might do shift control alt E. Shift-Command-Option-E, again, to do a visible stamp layer. And again, uh, I'm just sort of playing with this. Let's go to see what I get on these different blending options. Maybe I'll go with soft light right there so you can see it before, after, before, after. But that might be too intense. I'm going to pull the opacity down. And again, I might apply a blur. So there we go. You might apply a blur to that and just keep building on this, playing with this, add different colors till you get what you want. So in this example, I might add, let's say, eh, I'm going to add another layer there. And um, let me choose a little a darker blue here. Actually, I'm going to go with, um, yeah, I'm going to go with a darker blue. Just again, to play with this, I'm going to come down in this area here in these certain spots and just drop this in. Okay, not right or wrong. And then again, let's do a blending mode. And uh, I'm going to go with screen on that one, I think. And I am not going to pull the opacity down. I'm just going to leave that alone. And again, I'm not going to even use the blur tool on this one. So hopefully you got the idea on this. And then what I'm going to do to finish this off is uh, I'm going to do shift Control alt e again. And then I'm going to come down here to, uh, let's go to hue and saturation. And here's where you get to say, okay, this is a little bit too bright. So let's pull this down a bit. And then let's maybe pull down the saturation. Or maybe you want to push up the saturation. So I'll push up the saturation a bit on this, on the colors. But again, the lightness may be muted down a bit. So this is uh, before, after, before, after. And then th that could be my first, you know, custom uh, overlay texture I just created. Then come down here to File, Dropdown Menu choose save a copy um save it as let's come down here to a little pop-up menu a jpeg and then put it in the folder that you want to you know keep it at give it a name i'm not going to you know give it a name this is just for demo click on save and i just want this at a full resolution and then click on ok and then i'm done with that now again consider doing this uh, i'm here at the very top and I'm going to come over here to my properties of the hue and saturation right here. And you could change this by just moving the sliders around to come up with something different. So a different look. Now, that's too intense maybe in the colors. But again, you might want to come over here and say, let's pull that saturation down a bit. Let's pull the lightness or darkness down or up. And then you can come up with a different color spectrum and use that and save that out. So it's virtually unlimited experiment with different brushes, different blending modes for yourself, different blurs, drop in, you know, visual, uh, a visible stamp layer, I should say, play with hue and saturation and just experiment till you get what you want and then save it out as a JPEG. So hopefully that makes sense. This is the way uh, I create my own custom textures instead of going out and buying some, which I have in the past, but I find I have greater satisfaction when I create my own look and feel and start applying that uh, in my projects. All right, hopefully you've learned something. If you could do me a favor, if you have, and that is please like the video, subscribe to you if you're not subscribed, hit that notification bell. Next time I upload a video. This one I had to sneak out really fast because my normal videos are on a Wednesday, uh, but I got a lot of private emails asking, yes, could you please show us how you create custom uh, texture overlay so I can use them in my projects. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, let's end this right now, and that is like I usually do, and that is let's get the camera out. Let's take some images out there. Let's make mistakes. Why? Because we learn from making mistakes. Until next time, let's think creatively out of the box. See ya!